Welcome back to Houston Life. Get ready to meet the wildest, weirdest, and most wonderfully extreme creatures on the planet, alive and in action. Where? At the Houston Museum of Natural Science. I thought you were talking about me for a minute. So close. No, we're talking about this brand new exhibit, <laughs> Extreme Animals Alive. It's on display right now, and it lets you explore how animals adapt, survive, and sometimes thrive in even the most extreme conditions. That's interesting. Lauren Kelly is taking us up close and personal with some of them this afternoon. How's it going, LK? Yeah, interesting is a great word, Derek and Tessa, but fascinating is also a great word to describe some of these amazing animals here at Extreme Animals Alive. Houston Museum of Natural Science, super busy, Nicole, for the summertime. Camp has started. Yep. Everybody is out today. I love that this exhibit just opened because it is so perfect for all the kids coming out who are here at the museum. Yes. Um, it takes you through a couple different galleries. We've yep. got six galleries. One is just, what's an adaptation? Then the next one is like superpowers. So this is sort of framed like a graphic novel if you look around. We have super cold, we have super hot, and we have super super dark and super survivors. Okay. Do you want to go look at some things? Well, I just want to show you guys. We were here in front of the we're phoenix boxes that were so, so, so cute. That is what they look like. We just couldn't get them out right now. I guess maybe after lunch, Nicole, they needed a little bit of a nap time because they are tiny babies. But judging by their surroundings, is this a warm weather animal? Yes, everything that lives in this orange section is okay. from the Sahara Desert. Okay. I gotcha. So uh, they had their one little tablespoon of snacks, and now they're having a little afternoon siesta. A little tablespoon of snacks. I love it. Well, let's keep walking. Hi, guys. Are you having fun so far? Yeah. So this is a great exhibit to bring the family out because I do say that there are a lot of animals here. Oh, sorry, guys. That I never learned about in school. So we can walk this way. We'll just kind of follow how it goes. But in each different cage, mm -hmm. we're getting a look at different species that survive in the warm weather, right? Yeah. Thrive in it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and so like the fennec fox's ears are so big because that's yeah. how they dissipate heat. Okay, okay. Uh, the spiny mice have porcupine quills on their butts. The spiny mice? Yeah, they may also be napping. Oh, man. We you saw with the toke gecko. <laughs> it's like they're here and then they're not. Right, right. But they have uh, like almost like porcupine quills on their okay. butts. So they can't. Oh, that's good. Um, so I'm noticing that we're moving from the orange walls into the blue, and I'm guessing that would signify we're moving into animals that adapt and thrive better in the cold weather. Yes, okay. all of these are things that live above the Arctic Circle. Okay, okay. Tell us about the owl I see. So that is a snowy owl. It's kind of like um, Hedwig from Harry Potter. Oh, yes. <laughs> connection you look just like him okay so and I know that that is a female okay because you see the modeled on the the feathers yes the females have that modeling the males are almost pure white okay wow oh my goodness look at the big polar bear I mean that is obviously a cold weather animal the hair keeps it warm in the cold Yes, so in each one of these, like everything in here has some kind of adaptation that helps them stay uh, warm. Absolutely. So, for example, the musk ox can actually heat the area around them. The okay. Arctic fox has got uh, furry pads okay. on their feet. The polar bear's got furry pads on its feet, okay. but it also has a digestive system that is crazy. So they will go eat things and they will eat the polar bears, will eat certain parts of the animal and leave the rest because it takes so much energy to consume and hunt that animal. So they only want the best tidbit. I got it. So you told me something really fascinating quickly yeah. about this little arctic, no, I'm sorry, this is a frog right here. Yeah, this right? is the wood frog. Wood frog. So it's the only amphibian that lives north of the Arctic Circle. Okay. It's my, probably my favorite thing in this entire case. Um, <laughs> and it has more sugar in its blood than it does in water. Okay. And so when it gets cold, and it can freeze solid. Okay. You can't freeze solid no, because I can't freeze solid. <laughs> the crystals in the water would like damage. Yeah. Damage your thing. So he freezes okay. solid, okay. and then in the spring he just unfreezes, yeah, it's warrant, and hops, hops away. Well, we've got tons more coming up from Extreme Animals Alive. Nicole, I'm so fascinated now. There are so many animals I never knew existed, but again, a great, great exhibit, brand new here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. You've got some friends that are actually in cages that we can touch and see next, right? Yeah, I'm going to show you some okay. friends. Well, wish me luck, Derek and Tessa. More from the museum is coming up in just a bit. Friends in cages. All right, we'll stay tuned for that. That frog is fascinating.
he unfreezes, he thaws out and just hops away. Just in that short time with Lauren, I've already learned something I did not know before. That is so cool. Okay, coming up, she is always bringing us good food and good wine. We're so spoiled by her, really. But today, she is bringing in some good taste for the soul. Yeah, Tangi Patton of Good Back to Lauren <laughs> Kelly. She is hanging out at the Houston Museum of Natural Science for a look at their latest extreme exhibit. Lauren, we are still thinking about that little baby frog who freezes and then just wakes right up. Oh, I know. <laughs> well, I'm asking if we could maybe get one in our hands to hold and show you guys. But there are so many other extreme animals here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. Some of them we're getting a very up-close look at coming up next, including a vinegaroon, a scorpion, a millipede. Oh, that scorpion glows in the, the black light. That's too cool. We got way more coming up next when Houston Life Returns. <laughs> Do you want to pet him? I don't know. Just pet his little butt? Okay. No. Like this? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just touch his little butt okay, very guys, gently. We're here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. It is Extreme Animals Alive, a brand new exhibit that just opened. And there are all kinds of species in here. And we're learning about how they adapt in the cold weather and the hot weather and beyond. And Nicole Temple, thank you for showing us all of these okay. wonderful species today. First of all, what did you just pick up and come put on back over here. down? <laughs> that is a vinegaroon. Show our Can you let Stephanie in? Yeah, yeah. Stephanie's going to come in and, and with the foxes. This is, hold on. First of all, show this really quickly. This is a vinegaroon. It is a, it's in here because of its defense. Okay. It can shoot acid out of its butt when it's upset. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, we, we all heard that. We all heard that. Take one. I can't, like, move him over. We're going to let, we're going to let Nicole do that. But these okay. are the foxes that we saw earlier, you guys. What kind of foxes again for our viewers who are just tuning in? So these are fennec foxes. And they are from the Sahara Desert, and they're you, babies. Right? You can't hear them, but if I get closer, you can hear oh them. my goodness! <gasps> so, and this is Stephanie. She's our live Hi, animal Stephanie. program manager. Thanks she so just much. happened to be in here. <laughs> so everybody had lunch earlier. So now we're in nap nap time. Look at those ears. What did you tell me about those ears? So the way that they dissipate heat is to have these big ears okay. because it, the body uh, has blood circulating through it, and so that blood will go into the ear and it'll cool off through basically evaporative air conditioning. Okay. And then it'll come back in slightly colder than it came out of the ears. So that's one of the ways that they stay. <laughs> and that's these are very tiny and they'll get to be about how big? Uh, two or three pounds. Two or three pounds. Still very small, right? Oh my yeah. God, look at this one. This one's like just, it's like you're his mommy, just petting it like a little animal. So I want to get back to some of these other ones that you have on the table. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Stephanie, hand for bringing the foxes. They are so, so, so okay. cute. Good luck to you. Like this much. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. We wanted to get one big closer look at how the, the scorpion glows into the black light. So he's in here because we have several animals that glow in the dark. So okay. this is an emperor scorpion, and this one's clearly dried. Yes. But if I put this black light on there, um, you can yeah. see that he turns like a blue color. Um, they don't 100% know why that they change that color like that, but basically it's an indication somehow to the scorpion that it's in the sunlight. So okay. it could be that it's exposed. Yep. It could be that it is um, it needs to get out of the sun because okay. the predators can see it. Yeah. But we don't have a black light on a live one here because it also will sunburn them. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. So we have one in a gift sleigh case. And then who's this guy? This, actually, I'm going to get this one because he's out investigating. Okay. So, oh, he was. So this is a giant African millipede. Okay. Um, he is pretty fun. He's a living fossil. So he was alive millions of years ago, and he's alive today. There are about 10,000 species of millipede, and they used to be ginormous. If you guys go into the tank room when you leave, you'll see one up above on the header. They used to be basically the same size as me. <gasps> um, so they, <laughs> perfect. He's out in, oh, out in the wow. boot. Oh, look at all the legs. So uh, one of my friends here asked me if they were poisonous, and I said yes. Um, oh. The giant African millipedes, or all millipedes, have a, like a concoction inside of them that's basically like cyanide. Okay, hold on. Really quickly, I asked you about the difference between being poisonous and venomous. Explain. Okay, so venomous is if it's injected or you are bitten or you're stung. Okay. So it's if it tries to bite you. Okay. And poisonous is if you try to bite it. Uh, okay, well, don't. So <laughs> these are poisonous. So you don't want to eat them, no. but they're not going to hurt you okay, if I they're crawling you. on you. Look at those legs. This guy is venomous because he's got that big fat stinger yes. right there. I gotcha. Okay. Well, hms.org, all the info on extreme animals.
Nicole's alive. The exhibit is going to be open as of now, at least through the end of the year. Nicole, thank you for bringing all of these friends together and, and seeing some of these. That was an excellent presentation. Thank you for handling that and the vinegaroon and not making me touch it this time. But if you guys want to come out, this is an excellent and very educational exhibit. And it's also fun. Did you have fun? Okay, good. Derek and Tessa, back to you guys in Studio B for now. Uh, Lauren, I want to pet that fox. I want to pet that fox. I want to pet the centipede. Ew. Gross. You could put that fox in your purse and it could handle the Houston heat because it's from the Sahara Desert. It would be just fine here as a little baby. Sorry, Tessa needs a nap. Okay. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. After the break. A